This is the end of the line for this boat, and as we pull into a remote fishing village, I get my first sight of a Congo River monster. Ongi, Ongi. Yeah. They call them eels. I'm used to eels that are about like that round and maybe 18 inches, two foot long. These things, you know, they're the thickness of your leg and maybe four, getting on for five foot. I'll, I'll see if we can maybe get one out and have a proper look at uh, one. They're just such weird looking creatures. I'm not going to put my hands in the mouth there. There's some pretty nasty looking fangs in there. And they're, you know, they look sharp, they also look quite dirty and uh, unhygienic. I think I've got an idea on these. I think these are lungfish. Oui. Oh, oh. That is because this fish actually has an air bladder which is used as, as a lung, so it can actually breathe out of water. And this is a fish that can bury itself underground and survive droughts. It sort of, I think, belched out a little bit of air, and then there was a, oh, took some air in, and then belched out of the gills. Small eyes generally on a fish means that you know they don't use them much for for feeding. They're probably using vibration or scent in the water more than vision to find their food. Now, this was caught on a palm nut, so it suggests you know an omnivorous feeder. I mean, that mouth to me looks like it's going to take fish. I'd guess, like a lot of fish around here, you know, it's sort of opportunistic. It'll actually chomp anything that comes its way. But anyway, they call this an eel, and, you know, I have to say it's the most impressive eel that I've ever seen. Lungfish are ancient creatures, predating all animals that walk on land. When I look at a beast like this, Mamiwata no longer seems such a stretch of the imagination. fish is that it's still alive. Catfish tend to stay alive for a long time out of water. Wow. Look at that. Look at that.